Hello everyone and welcome back to this channel. Thinking back about my career, I realized that one of the most consequential decisions that I have ever made was to pick the right person as my PhD advisor. Working with her, I was able to learn how to do research, how to write papers, and then eventually this helped me being successful in my career, building my own lab, publishing my own papers, getting my own funding and also job opportunities. So today, I really want to give you what are the most important factors to consider in selecting your future advisor for your PhD thesis, since I think this is going to be one of the most important decisions that you're going to make for your PhD studies, but also for your career. Before we start, I would really appreciate if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel so that more students could benefit from this content. And additionally, please let me know your experience in selecting your advisor in the comments below and also how this affected your career moving forward. Thank you and let's begin. So the first factor to consider is that the potential advisor should be academically successful. And I will translate this into publishing consistently good papers in good venues. So let's break this down a little bit. Let's first talk about consistency. So there are some researchers which are able to publish tens, if not even a hundred papers a year. Sometimes these are in charge of very big laboratories with 10 PhD students, several postdocs, they have several collaborations. So definitely they're able to produce many more papers than the average researcher. However, this does not mean that people that publish less papers a year are less valuable advisor because they can also be successful and they can also help you learn and becoming a very successful researcher in your future. However, at the same time, you need to make sure that your potential advisor is research active. So it doesn't matter if you just work on cool problems, then you're not able to publish good papers on that problems. So you need to make sure that the advisor publishes consistently. And another important aspect is that it publishes consistently with their own students so that the student and the advisor have a major role in the papers that are published. And another way of saying this is that the papers come out of their laboratory. In addition to publishing consistently, you should also look at the quality of someone's publication record and specifically of those papers that are published with someone's students. So at the beginning of your career, this may be challenging to do because you don't have a lot of experience, but also I think is extremely important because if someone has a very high number of publications, but these are in low quality venues or potentially even in predatory venues, then it could be your problem one day after you graduate with this type of publication to actually find a job. So my suggestion is to go through the publication record, look at some of these publications and check them through some ranking system. So of course, ranking systems are not perfect, but at least they can give you an idea of what is the quality of the publication record of someone that you are considering as an advisor. The second quality to consider when selecting an advisor is their ability to attract research funding. This is something that is more important in some countries versus others, such as for example, the United States or the United Kingdom, where most of the PhD students are funded through research grants. However, even if you are funded in some other ways, so for example, you can be a teaching assistant or you can be funded by the Ministry of Education, etc., research funding can still help you, for example, publishing because conferences are very expensive. Many journals these days are having charges for extra pages. And also, if you want to publish an open access journal, then very often you need to end up paying a fee in order to make that paper open access. Additionally, funding may allow you to buy equipment that could be used in order to perform precious experiments that will help your papers getting published. In order to evaluate someone's ability in attracting research funding, look at their funding record, look at the amounts that have been awarded, look at how the grants have been awarded over time, and also look at the type of awards that have been made. If these are more research awards, so that are meant to support students to do research, or if, for example, these are more infrastructure type of awards that are meant to build some sort of infrastructure. In general, look also if that advisor has a race, research assistance, and I also suggest to just sit down at the beginning before you start working with someone and just try to understand what is the funding situation. Are there opportunities to fund yourself? Are there opportunities to support travels, to attend conferences, to buy equipment that you may need, etc. And finally, now we are at what I consider the most important aspect when evaluating someone as a potential advisor. 
And this is the ability to be someone with whom you're going to have a good working relationship with. And there are several important things to say here, and I'm going to break them down for you. So the first factor that I think you should consider is that if your personality and the advisor personality can actually match properly. In my personal career, I had a certain period in which I actually doubt if I was able to do this job just because I was working with someone that didn't have the right personality match for me. So you need to realize that when you work with an advisor doing your PhD studies, this is going to be a very long working relationship that is going to last years. Additionally, you're going to go through the good times, but also through several bad times, several stressful times. So it's very important that Personality differences are not going to add additional stress, but actually are going to help overcoming potential issues. Additionally, advisors have different advising styles. Some advisors tend to be very hands-on and follow very, very closely what the students are doing. Some other ones are going to be very hands-on and just try to give you a lot of freedom and then try to see what the results are of the research that you are doing. And additionally, some advisors may have very large groups with many students and postdocs and undergraduates and master students and some other advisors instead may have very small laboratories. So you need to try to understand what is the specific situation of this person that you are considering and if you would fit well in that specific situation. The question now is how can you understand if you could have a good working relationship with a potential advisor? Well, the best case scenario is when your PhD studies are funded by some sort of external source. So for example, you could be a teaching assistant or you could have a fellowship. So in this case, you would work with that advisor without any specific commitment for let's say one semester and then decide to keep working together or not based on that previous experience. This, however, is not always possible. So in that case, what I recommend you to do is to sit down and have an interview with that potential advisor. The advisor will interview you, but you will also interview the advisor asking many of the questions that we have covered in this video, for example. Additionally, what I strongly suggest is to talk to the current and former students of that advisor so that you can understand how it looks to work with that person, what is the environment in the lab, and you can understand if that is a good fit for you or not. So I really hope that you found this video useful and please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel and please let me know in the comments below what is your experience. Thank you very much and see you next time.